Hey everyone, Chris Chris Jack here for another instructional video with Drift Outfitters. And today we're going to be tying some squirmy worm variations that I like to fish. Uh, squirmy worm needs no introduction. It's been a staple pattern since its inception. Uh, terrific producing fly in all water bodies around the world. Um, but it can be a little finicky to tie and people do have trouble with it as simple as a fly as it looks to be. And so I'm hoping today that we can make things easier for you and uh, give you some effective patterns to try out on the water. So with any more, let's jump into it. What is probably the most commonly seen way of tying this guy, and this is um, just on a, a jig hook. So this is a this is a size. What if this is a twelve uh, Dohiku jig hook? And uh, generally, I tie this fly on, on fairly large hooks. It's not a small fly, and so you might as well take advantage of a larger hook gap, uh, use something a little bigger, and just get more reliable hookups with it. So when I started tying these guys, I would try to tie them just with regular tying thread. This is uh, like an A dot Vivas here, which I love for most flies in this kind of size range. Builds up quickly. It's strong. It's easy to work with. So you can lock her bead in here just with a few tight turns. This is a three and a half millimeter um, just tungsten slide of bead here. I usually use tungsten on these flies. Uh, the material itself is actually uh, it's close to neutrally buoyant but maybe even slightly buoyant um, and so it really slows down the descent of this fly. If you use a tungsten bead, a fairly large one at that, <clears throat> it'll uh, definitely help you out there. So I'll show you something here. I'll take my thread back to the bend start and let's tie just your classic pink to start with. So this is the squirmy material if you haven't seen it before. It's a silicone extruded uh, material, round in shape. They come in pretty long sections so you can make these things big if you want to. Um, the thing is though it's very very soft and uh, it's great in the water. It moves very nicely and fish hold on to it. It feels lifelike when they eat it but the issue that a lot of people run into is, is one of two things. Either when they're tying it in to start with they'll place it on the hook here and they'll put a wrap on and they'll notice when they start wrapping it wants to really spin or what will happen very often as well is they'll do the same thing and they'll start wrapping and they'll want to cinch up and a lot of time didn't do it too badly here actually but if I take these wraps off you'll probably be able to see it you'll start yeah there you go if you can see it you'll start to really damage this material and partially cut it a lot of the time which obviously isn't great. These flies will fall apart on you very quickly on the water if, um, if you tie them like that. And so I've gotten away from using regular tying thread. Again, as much as I love uh, Viva's tying threads, I found this isn't the best place to be using them. Instead, what I've switched over to now, which makes the whole thing way, way easier, this is Glowbrite, get in focus there, this is a Glowbrite floss. This is a hot pink color, but they make it in lots of bright colors. And um, what's great about this stuff is it's really soft, it's quite large, um, it's, it's a floss, it's not really a tying thread, so it's not the strongest stuff, but you don't need a lot of um, force applied to this material to lock it in. So I've just, uh, I've gone to this exclusively and it has been just magic. You can use other large threads too, but I found this is by far the grippiest and easiest to work with. So I've loaded that onto a bobbin. This is the, the number two shade, so that hot pink. And I'll just start that thread right behind the bead here and build up a little bit of a thread dam to lock it in. And then using my tag end here pulled up on angle to stack wraps next to each other, I'll just bring my thread down to the butt. Try to keep those wraps fairly tight. That would have to be perfect. Snip off the excess. And then we'll grab our squirmy material here. And lengthwise, I usually tie these a little longer than maybe I'm intending to fish them. And the great thing about them is that because this material is so soft, if you find that your fly is a little long on the water and you want to shorten it, you can just pull it down to whatever length you want really, really easily. Obviously, you can't add on though. So usually I start out with um, you know, maybe an inch or a little more off the back here. I'll just place it on top. I'll get one soft wrap on there, come all the way back up to the top, and I'll just apply a little bit of pressure, again still holding the material in as close to the tie-in point as I can get it, and then put one or two more decently tight wraps on there, but not really you know, wrenching down on it because I don't want to cut this material. You may find it wants to twist slightly on you, so you can just kind of ease it back, pull it back towards yourself. 
and then that tail should be right on top there. At this point, I'll pull the material back and put wraps immediately in front of it and kind of pressing up against the material. I find this kind of catches the edge of, of the material and so when you start to wrap, it doesn't want to roll as much on you. Um, if you don't do that step, sometimes the tail still twists on you a little bit. So with that locked in there, with those wraps bunging right up against it, I'll then just take my thread right up to the bead. And I'll start wrapping this up the bead. You can use the rotary function on your vise if you want or just wrap. Don't wrap too tightly. Um, if you wrap too tightly, you'll, you'll again sort of damage this material and the fly will actually have a tendency to come apart more easily on you. So apply a little bit of pressure to stretch it out slightly, but don't really crank down. Put a couple wraps on the front and you'll notice that sort of uh, stacks the body a little tighter and slides some wraps back toward the tail so it really fills in well. And I'll bring the tag end up to the top of the fly, cross my thread over. <coughs> If it doesn't stay on top, then we'll just bring a wrap up in front to hold it there and then behind, like so. And then just do a quick whip finish in front. This Globrite is really sticky uh, stuff, so it, it actually holds pretty well. You don't really need to cement these flies, which is great as well. And then you just want to choose how long you want this fly to ultimately be. Some people will clip it off tight here and just have the tail. I prefer to have it at both ends. And again, I go a little longer than shorter, so I have the option to adjust. So that is just your regular jig version of this fly. I'll show you another way to tie it. And this is how I usually tie mine. Because the one thing you notice about the jig here is that the front bit kind of sticks up, which I don't know if it really makes a difference. I know a lot of very good anglers who fish it like that and like it. But what I like is to try and get it, as you saw in the example fly here, just coming straight out the front. I think it lies a little more naturally. So this is just a straight eye, or not straight eye, but just a slight down eye hook here. This particular one is the Dohiku wet fly hook, which I like a lot. A size 12 or 10 works well. You can use the, the blob hooks work really well, or just a large nymph hook. <clears throat> Even a small streamer hook would work fine. So I'll get that in there, and I've also got some lead wire here. This is an 025 lead wire. And this isn't so much to add a whole lot of weight as it is to lock the bead in. So I'm just going to make three or four tight turns here. Break off each tag end, like so, and I'll just press it up into the bead there. Same tying thread here. And I'll start this just back from the lead wire a little bit, so you can see there's a bit of a gap there. Get that thread started, take off the tag end, and now I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bead, I'm going to push it back from the eye a few millimeters, not a few, but maybe two millimeters. So you can see I've now got a little bit of a, a gap there. It's not pressed right up against the eye. And with that there, I'll just take a quick turn over the lead and then back to lock it in place. As you can see, it's just being held in place there so it's not sliding back and forth. And I'll push the bead up against it. And I'll take my tying thread and I'll actually pull it right over the top of the bead like so, and put a few wraps in front. So that thread goes over the bead. And do the same going back. Just doing my best to keep these wraps right on top of that bead there. Okay, and I'll take wraps, build up a little bit of a, a taper <coughs> to the body here, and then bring that thread up over the lead wire, trying to cover it up best I can there, like so. And now that bead's locked in, just back from the eye. All right, now. Take our thread back to the bend once more. Same length of squirming. This is actually, this is the exact same length. So usually I find you get about two flies of every long strand. And again, I'll tie it sort of similar length off the back, inch and a half, two inches maybe. Max, I find if you go longer than that kind of two inch mark, it'll start wrapping around the hook. So again, soft wraps just to place on top and then a few tight wraps right in front while pulling it back. Like so. And then we'll again just start wrapping this material forward. 
And this is where building up that smooth underbody with our floss there really helps because it makes for a, a nice smooth transition for this to, to ramp up. Now once I get up to the bead here, I'll, do, I'll tie it off the exact same way that we tied off that last fly there. So just with the material on top, like so, make two or three turns, turn in front. And now what I'm going to do is take my thread and wind over that bead once more, just to the front, lock it in. You can see we've got some exposed thread wraps there. Those, I've never had an actual issue with them um, getting broken by fish's teeth or anything like that. I think the fly usually falls apart because it's such a soft material um, you know, from the fish's teeth more often than the, the thread, whatever. If it makes you feel better, you could glue it or you could even whip finish behind and start again front. Like I said, I've never had an issue with this. At this point, this material here will pull forward, stretch it slightly and catch it on top in front of the bead. And you can see by folding it over now, it lays straight out the front here and uh, just doesn't have that weird angle that it did in the last one. With that, we'll just quickly whip finish on top in front here. Like so. Now, as I say, I, I really have a lot of confidence that, that whip finish is actually going to hold on this, uh, this material here. But if it makes you feel better, uh, you can glue it. One thing you would generally want to avoid with this material is things like head cements or super glues, uh, as they'll actually melt the material. They all kind of fall apart on you. So I prefer, I haven't found that UV resin does any damage to it. So this is just the solar resin thin. And I'll just take a drop of this stuff. I usually put it on the underside, just keeping it away from the material. I don't want to stiffen up that material or anything. So you can put a drop on the bottom there, hit it with your UV light. And that will keep it from ever coming undone on you there. As I say, I don't think you really have to do that step, but you know, if it makes you feel a little better about the, the durability of your flies, that's the way I would do it. I, I don't trust any other glue with this stuff. Um, yeah, with one notable exception, which I'll show you next, actually. So that is, that's my go-to. That's how I usually tie these things. Um, yeah, it works really well. It sits nicely in the water. I find it falls nice and even. The next one is what I would call the cheating way to do this. But it's also, I found, probably the best way to do it uh, if you don't want a weighted version. So. Well, uh, you know, let's change up colors just to keep things interesting here. This, this is same stuff. This is glow bright. This is shade number seven, so it's like a, a bright but light orange. Doesn't really matter. We'll do the same thing. Start this in front. Wrap down over the body. I'll come back up with that. Clip off the excess, like so. And then what I'll do is I'll just build up a little bit of a thread base here. Like so. And then I'll whip finish. And cut our thread. And this is why I call it the cheating way. It, it works really well, but <laughs> it's, uh, it's not the prettiest. I have some zap -a gap here. I'll just put a small drop onto my bodkin. Very small amount. I don't want to overdo it because it does burn this stuff, like I say. And I'll take my squirmy material. So in this case, we have a, this is a coral color. It's like a very pale pink, also a nice one. And I usually take my hook out of the vise for this. And all you want to do is, if anyone has ever used soft plastics, fishing conventional gear before, it's pretty well the same deal, except on a much smaller scale. So it can be a little finicky, but all you want to do is snake that material up onto the point of the hook. And you want to go through about as long as the shank is on the hook. So now you bring it up around the bend, like so, and just pull it over those thread wraps. You gotta kinda work it over, like so. And there you go. That's your squirm. That's your, 
you know, no thread wrap squirmy basically. You just put the thread wraps and the super glue in there so it has something to grip onto. If you do that on a bare hook, it tends to slide right back off pretty easily. Um, and the super glue does melt this material slightly, um, but it's on the underside and this, this material is not being damaged by wrapping it or tying it in at all, so it's actually pretty durable. Uh, at some point in its life, you may have, it may start sliding down, you may have to kind of push it back up, but it works pretty well. And this is, I would say, the cleanest way I, I've found to do a, a weightless version. So if you're doing this on like an indicator rig, this would be my go-to way of doing it. Um, needless to say, of course, you could also do this with a bead head as well. That would work just fine there. I'll show you one more way, and this is, this is a super dirty way of tying this thing, but sometimes you just need it. Um, and so this, this would be a good one to keep in mind, especially if you're early spring fishing. And this is a double bead version. So I've got just regular countersunk beads here. I have um, an eighth of an inch and a five thirty seconds of an inch. And I pull one of each of the packs here. And this is a, a much larger hook I have here. You'll see this is um, this guy is a size six nymph hook from Deku, so 302 series. I find the longer shank looks good on this one. I don't like tying it with too short a shank. So you can even, again, use a streamer hook if you wanted a, um, a bit of a heavier wire option for yourself. I'm going to start with our 530 seconds hook here. Or sorry, actually, you know what? I'm skipping a step. I'll pop that in. And we'll start our thread quickly again here. So same thread, same floss, just up at the eye. Take it down a little ways, not all the way down the shank. I'll take, again, just a length of our squirmy material. Again, this is that coral color. And I'll just measure length again, you know, an inch, inch and a half off the front here. Tie it in the exact same way that we would tie in our tail, just back from the eye. You can put a couple wraps in front too to help stop it from spinning. Snip off this back piece close. You can take a couple wraps over that to tidy it up. And then we'll whip finish over that entire thing there. And clip that off. Again, you can glue this at this point if you want, which I will do. I'll just use a little bit of super glue here quickly because this isn't really going to get on the material. This is just for the thread wraps. This is uh, not very vulnerable part of the fly, so I'm not too worried about that getting beat up. Now I'll take those lo the larger of those two beads there. So this is that 5 30 seconds of an inch. In, uh, in this case, it's gold. You could mix up the colors easily on these. Gold is one of my go-tos. It's a, a bright, aggressive fly, so generally gold is, is my preference. Silver also works really well. You can mix up the colors, obviously, there. But what's interesting about how I put this on is, I don't know if you can see that, but you put on with the larger opening in the bead facing forwards. And the reason you do that is because it'll go up over top of those thread wraps and slightly over that worm material a little bit more cleanly than if you put on the regular way. It would it would be forced to sit back with a big ugly gap. So put on backwards and it'll kind of mask that, uh, that tie-in point there. And then I'm just going to grab the smaller of those two beads. So again, that's the eighth of an inch. And I'm going to put it on the same way again backwards. So put the point through the larger of the two holes, like so. And what you'll see when these butt up against each other is that they sort of cup each other, and they sit right up against each other. If you put one on one way and flip the other so you have the small hole facing it, it um, again sits with a bit of a gap, so this sort of melds together nicer. And then what I'm going to do, I've got some smaller lead wire here. This is a, a .015. And this isn't so much for weight. You've already got a ton of weight between those two. This is just, again, to hold that bead in place here. So I'll put, that's about five wraps on there. Break off the tags, and I'll just push that up against the beads there to hold it in place. Break off the excess, like so. Restart our thread just behind that wire to hold it up against the beads, and then I'll bring our tying thread over top of that wire and just cover it up quickly. Take wraps down toward the bend of the hook. Snip that. And grab the 
rest of that same color score me. You could even do a, a two color score me in this case if you wanted to really mix it up. Again, just place it off the back. Soft wrap while holding it right on top of the shank. A couple more tight ones. Pull back, wraps in front. Like so. And then bring your thread up. I'm going to show you one other thing that you can do here. Cool little trick to add a little bit of glimmer to your fly here. This is a pearl tinsel. This is from Uni. This is a size 12. Be like a large in most brands. And you could mix up the tinsel colors too, but I'll take a length of that. And right in front here, I'll just catch that in on the side. Wrap back over, down to the butt, and then carry my thread up to the first of those beads. Now again, you could do this without the tinsel, but just a cool little option that you have here is you can start wrapping this tinsel just over the body. This is all going to be under body here, so don't worry about how perfect it is, but you want to try and cover that body best you can. And then we'll tie it off just behind the bead and trim off the excess. I could take our squirmy material and wrap it just like we did in the other patterns. Up to that bead and tie it off right there. I'm not too worried about which side I tie it off in this case because we already have our front facing piece. This I'm just going to trim nice and tight at this point. And then I'll just throw on a quick whip finish behind that second bead there. Trim our thread. Again, you could add a little bit of that UV glue if you wanted to really secure it well. But you can see how that pearl tinsel there kind of shines through the body. Gives it that extra little glint. Makes for a, a very interesting um, change up to that pattern. So there you have it, your squirmy worm, four ways to tie it. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you liked it, please like and subscribe to our channel. As always, all materials used in today's video are available on our web store at driftoutfitters.com. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Until the next time, happy tying.